all good things have to come to an end. And of course, I'm not talking about these movies. I'm talking about how sad it is that that's the last time we're going to see that intro for at least a couple years. Isn't that right? Producer it's slash tragic. producer Nick Scarpino. It's a tr- it's a tragedy, and I and I for one, I can't stand for this. I can't stand for this. And it's you know what can you do? You can't do anything though. There's just no way we can't have stand to... in general. Exactly. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm Tim Gettys. That's the producer seducer Nick Scarpino. We're also joined by it's Christmas in June. Joey Noel. I've never been so happy for an interview to be over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and we thought we thought we had it bad with Transformers in terms of the in reviews, but here we are, everybody. But maybe bringing a little bit, just a little bit of sunshine to this. We have the big daddy, Greg Miller. Hello. How are you, Tim? You bringing sunshine today, Greg? Aren't I always, Tim? You always Do you remember are. the part in the movie when the T-Rex walked into the circle? Yeah. And it was just like the logo, except he's live. I elbowed Andy so fucking hard. He did the thing. That's the logo. Sure <laughs> and sure speaking did. of Tandy, of uh, Tandy, of course, we have the Texas Treat Latino Heat clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. The globe trotting head shot in Nitro Rifle from Twitch.tv, Andy Cortez. Let's get this shit over with, man. <laughs> are you proud of me, Andy? I did it. You, you crushed it. You crushed it. You did not. You Thank didn't you. put rootin' tootin' in like I. Asked. I didn't add the rootin' tootin'. I got to get <laughs> the normal cadence down the before I start rootin' tootin', puss and bootin'. Globe trotting, head shotting, rootin' tootin', nitro rifle from Twitch.tv. Andy Cortez. That's how I'd like it. That's the official from now on. Thank you. So here's the deal, everyone. This is kind of funny's Jurassic in review, where we've been ranking, reviewing, and recapping every single Jurassic Park and now Jurassic World movie. Of course, this is part of a bigger franchise for us here at Kind of Funny in review, where we rank, review, and recap every movie franchise imaginable. You can get it on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com as a video. If you want it as a podcast, search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review. And chances are the movie that you're looking for us to either tear apart or utterly praise is probably gonna be there for you to listen to a two hour or so recap review of uh if you wanted to get the show ad free and watch live as we record it you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny just like our patreon producers gordon mcguire molecule and fargo brady have done and speaking of patreon our patreon platinum tier item this month is super dope it is the danger zone shirt you can check it out now inspired by top gun done by cameron kennedy so awesome by the way y'all i am so excited i have not been this busy in my life in a very long time and i am looking down uh, like at least a month of many all-nighters and tomorrow i'm getting on my first flight in a couple years to go with greg and bless down to la and i have so many things to do but i have one last thing on my checklist to get done before i get to any of that and that's to watch top gun maverick for my third time in 40x with gary Whitta. Gary Whitta. and oh i can't God. fucking wait <laughs> i like that i love that you were so excited about that you put that on the calendar so all of us could be jealous that you get to hang out with gary mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's the only reason that i did that nick <laughs> yeah. uh but Here's the thing, guys. I'm talking a lot about all this cool stuff, but before we even get into the rigmarole and all that stuff, I want to give a major shout out to a kind of funny best friend out there who's been there since day one, and he is absolutely living the damn dream. His name is Sancho West. You might know him from multiple streams he's been on with us or from all of his own streams that he's just been utterly crushing the last couple years, and here he is as the main host of the Jurassic World Dominion red carpet event. He's interviewing Chris Pratt, interviewed oh, the cool. entire squad. He tried getting an in-review joke in there and ran out of time, so he didn't get to do it. But, like, <laughs> you got to love You're it. fired, it's- Sancho West. <laughs> <laughs> absolute insanity. Shout out to him. Go send him some sweet, nasty love on Twitter and all of that because it is absolutely insane to see. Um, but with all that positivity out of the way, let's get to it. Today, we're talking about Jurassic World Dom Minion. For the um, one time... Of two hours and 26 minutes, making this one of the longest Jurassic Park movies. Uh, It was released on June 10th, 2022. And a note here, uh, June 10th hasn't happened yet as of us recording this. So we got to see the screener. And every once in a while, when we do our new movies, Nick does the plot. And there's usually a Wikipedia for us to go off. That is not the case today. There is no plot. So we're going to be free winging it just like the people that wrote this movie did. You know what I mean? It's going to be fine. (laughs) It's going to be fine. Somebody wrote this movie? (laughs) You're about to write it. You're about to write it. So everyone strap in. This might be a better version of the movie, or it might not. Uh, 
This was also directed by Colin Trevorrow, who's the dude that did the first Jurassic World movie and wrote the second Jurassic World movie. Um, he also uh, did the original treatment for Duel of the Fates, which was to be the ninth Star Wars movie. But as we all know, that ended up not ended up happening. The music was done by the GOAT, Michael Giacchino. Continuing to let me down when it comes to these Jurassic movies. Uh, you know, everyone has to miss sometimes. Uh, it has a budget of $165 million and a box office. <clears throat> Let's get into it, y'all. The first movie, mm-hmm. $1.3 billion, right? Second movie, mm-hmm. one point. No, no, sorry. First, $1.67 billion. Okay. Second, $1.3 billion. We're in a different era. Times have changed. A lot of shit at stake, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Jurassic World Dominion is already crushing it. The movie Aww. already Aww. started strong last weekend with 55.7 million from 15 territories, including Korea and Mexico. Now, after debuting in the US and Canada with at least 125 million at 4,600 plus theaters, plus another estimated 120 plus million from 59 new offshore markets, including China, after this weekend, it'll see a worldwide box office of at least. Three hundred and twenty-five million dollars. God damn! <laughs> what We're the part fuck? of the problem. We did. <laughs> hey, technically, we didn't pay for it. So think about it that way. That's true. Right. Was, We're was encouraging people to see it by doing this. But this is what we need to do. At the, we'll we'll have a lot of fun. But then at the end of this episode. We'll just yell into the mic. Don't see this movie. Just watch this review five more times. <laughs> I, I, I will. I, I will say. Go for it, Andy. Complaining. This is just a lot of complaining right now. Like me and Greg had a blast last night. Yeah. I don't uh, know, guys. Uh, you weren't laughing along with us. That's on you. You can't well, open I, up your heart, stab some fun out there. That's open on you. Open up your hearts. Yeah. Open what I will heart. say <laughs> is uh, that you guys might have enjoyed it. The row behind us, which was a bunch of people, like studio people that worked, yeah. uh, that worked on the movie to some extent. I doubt they were the ones like uh, the production. I think it's more marketing and stuff. Um, I don't know how much they love Kevin's constant Mickey Mouse laugh going on. <laughs> I thought we were about to get kicked out a couple of times. Me too. Because they, like, at one point, a security guard did come up and stand behind our row, and yeah. I was like, "That is definitely someone complaining about Kevin." <laughs> <laughs> That's all he would hear. Kevin. Sometimes laughs, he has that Joker laugh too. You know, he I mean? laughs just hardest. Like, ah! <laughs> He left hardest when the pilot spray painted it too on the side of the plane. He laughed that was so stupid hard with that. So and I was like, that. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Uh, it was a whole thing. But anyways, that is all the rigmarole stuff for this. Let's get right into it. Where do I want to start with my mind's eye, Joey? Um, Man, I wish I would have just seen Maverick again last night. Uh, so what I will say is that this movie, I mean, this movie isn't good. This is by like, any means. say something positive about this movie. That's what exactly. you're doing. I will say that I had more fun with this movie. Uh, I don't know if any of that was intentional because I think I just laughed at a lot of things that weren't supposed to be mm-hmm. funny but are just so horrifically bad. Uh, like the villain of, of this Scott's movie performance. is so bad. Like, I don't. Like the acting was bad, <laughs> like the acting and the writing. It's so terrible. Yeah. Um, it was kind of fun having the old crew back, but also kind of not fun. Uh, sometimes I feel like they made them like a little bit more bumbling and dumb than they needed to be. They're old like, now. That's what old people do, right, Nick? They're boomers. Yeah, but <laughs> I, they're these are like very Got accomplished him. scientists, you know, like they, they know shit. They're not just like off the street. Um, I still don't care about uh, Chris Pratt and Bryce what's her name. Yeah, still comic that they're comically funny that they're trying to make them still be a couple. With uh, a kid though. With a kid. And hey, it's man. well known that kids solve everything. You put a kid in a relationship that's struggling, that's going to be rock solid. So uh, a kid who's her own mother. That's pretty cool. <laughs> And honestly, the way that they double down on like, how do we make people think that this situation is even weirder than her being a clone of her mom from the last movie? They committed for this one. And you're just like, okay, this is what we're doing. I never know how much spoilers we're doing on these. Spoil the shit out of it. They're here. Oh. No, we're, you're we're, either here because you watch this movie and you want to see it shit on, or you're here just to see a movie get shit on. <laughs> yeah. As if it's not bad enough that her that she's just a clone of her mother. Let's add in that her mother gave birth to her. <laughs> Like, yeah. let's just go for it. <laughs> just to extra uh, fuck you up. You, you also, yeah. Were, yeah. You weren't born to they, test you. In the last film. Yeah. And the reveal for it is so weird. Uh, in the last one, Tim said that it wasn't fast and furious enough. I think it's angling in that direction to be like more wacky and wild. 
but uh it's still not great i cared more about the dinosaurs this time which is impressive oh. compared to the last one where you don't care about the anymore. dinosaurs <laughs> no andy you tease a little uh little ray of sunshine that normally comes from greg miller what do you got for me no there's no ray of sunshine um, <laughs> no not a, not, a, not a chance Th- this when we walked out like i i told nick and greg i was like this is as bad as it gets this is as bad <laughs> as it gets and i think near the end of the movie some of the misery was kind of saved by maybe three or four of Jeff Goldblum's lines. His typical Jeff Goldblum, I'm going to be comedic uh, relief here, and I'm going to say a couple funny things that's going to make you laugh, legitimately make you laugh, as opposed to us laughing just at the movie. We laughed with it, (laughs) with Jeff Goldblum a couple times, and that was really neat, you know? (laughs) (laughs) It was a, it was yeah. a cool. It was a when cool he's like, "Oh, Jurassic World, not a fan." <laughs> it was a cool thing to experience, you know, to laugh uh, with the movie uh, for a change. But um, Tim, this is gonna be this is gonna be weird. I think o- only Tim will understand this, and maybe a handful of our audience. Do you remember the episode of Nathan for You when they had the fake Johnny Depp and they were making a movie with the fake Johnny Depp? Yes. S- like so many of the scenes of just like two people talking to each other whether it's ellie and uh alan grant or whether it's um fucking owen and somebody else like when there's just two or three people talking to each other the dialogue genuinely seems like it's written by ai (laughs) and it's it's some of the worst written shit i've ever experienced like i can't believe how they it's it's really just like they just didn't give a shit. Like we got to get to the plot, we got to get to the next thing. So just say some bullshit so that we can move this along. Um, it's pretty atrociously written. It is really badly acted. Dotson is. I I leaned over to Greg Nick, while Dotson is kind of just acting like a weirdo, and I was like, Greg, if at I think he's gonna turn into a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, he was like, this guy's gonna turn like, like dinosaur. I think he did. He did some DNA splicing or something with himself because he's acting so bizarre. You, and I feel like at any moment he's gonna like grow like scales or some yeah. shit. Like Lizard it was just like Spider Man. It was a truly was so like bad. bizarre performance by that dude. And I think he's supposed to be this eccentric genius tim cook he's like steve uh, jobs yeah steve jobs yeah. yeah not he looks like tim cook he's more like he looks steve like jobs tim cook but yeah he acts all yeah steve jobs. um i i terrible performance i thought uh this movie was pretty miserable like i looked at my watch <laughs> about an hour and 40 into the movie and kevin noticed me <laughs> kevin was like we're still going huh <laughs> and i laughed so hard it's- and then i looked at my watch again about 20 minutes later and we were still going this movie refused to end uh, it was just all bad all the time. This movie was fucking really bad, man. Nicholas, um, there's a there's a shot in this movie where uh, the, the Charlotte, I think, is the young girl's name Charlotte. That's her name, right? Uh, goes up the ladder, right? And the the Tyrannosaurus Rex and mom, the, but Charlotte's mom, whatever the young kid's name, Maisie. Maisie. Maisie goes up the ladder, right? And the, the it's a cool shot where the the the, the, the gra- like the transfer strikes like boom, right? She goes, oh no, no, and they're like, oh, you gotta you gotta hurry up, right? And so she goes up the ladder, and then someone else goes up the ladder, and then they just cut to the other eight people already on the land. <laughs> because like, Colin Trevorrow was like, nobody fucking cares. Nobody cares about these people going up this ladder. There's too many characters by the time so we get the climax of this. That we just we kill none of them. Literally nothing for them to do. We can't kill any of them because we don't kill people no in stakes. Jurassic Park movies anymore. There's no stakes anymore. We've seen all this uh, literally five times now. And for a, there was a a moment where I was like, oh, Campbell Scott's character is kind of different, right? Maybe he's coming at this from a tech standpoint. Maybe it's gonna be more like don't look up, where it's best laid plans. But yep. it, just because of his incompetence or ego, uh, no, he's just a comic book bad guy. It literally goes down the elevator like Ooh, evil genius with the locusts. I will say I give this movie a little credit for having an espionage angle. I did not think that Ellie Sattler and Sam Neill were gonna have to sneak into the subterranean basement of this high tech Apple facility. By the way, I love that it looked like the Apple facility. Hilarious. I don't know if you guys caught that, Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say I was super low on this movie until they said Campbell Scott's last name. And I'm like, is that the Dotson 
from the first movie. Dotson, Dotson, we got, we got Dotson, Dotson here. here. Yeah. Genius. Put it in. I had that same moment. Greg the asshole's right again. I had that, I had oh, that yeah. same yeah. moment. I was like, oh, it's fucking Dotson. That's cool. And then that was like the last time I thought that. The whole movie. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're decidedly yeah. different characters. <laughs> There's no fucking way those characters. Uh, no, this movie is a fear or a dream, dude. It's. I, 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 I got halfway through it and I literally. I was like, I don't know what happened for the last 30 minutes. And I was paying attention. <laughs> There's one point where like all the dinosaurs break out, but instead of paying attention to these massive killing machines, there's like 20 people in Malta that are just taking bets on who's going to win this knife fight. And I'm like, that's how I feel. I don't care what's happening behind me. I'm just going to focus on what how, how big do we pop? How yeah. big do we pop? They said they were going to Malta. <laughs> An we entire so row loud. of people are, yes, <laughs> Malta. <laughs> Turns out Malta, pretty beautiful city. Now, pretty beautiful. also, my favorite thing about this, Malta comes up on screen. We all start losing our shit. What's Nick do? Gets up and goes to the bathroom immediately. And Gia looks over and be like, did Nick literally just leave when they went to Malta? <laughs> like, I was... How great would have been if the Ace Man came back in, though. Oh, oh my God. Well, if you'd have known. Um, I was so bored at that point that I went out to just pick a candy. I, like, and that's I had a conversation. so early in the movie. Yeah, I just had a conversation <laughs> so with the guy. Early on. Oh. He was like, do you want a Diet Coke? And I was like, can you make this a little harder for me to get this refill? Because I'd like to burn a few minutes out of here before I go back in that theater. <laughs> can you argue think- with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think that's early? The movie starts and it's the now this recapping everything that's happened with dinosaurs taking oh, the earth and the, and yada, and the yada, weird yada. TikTok talk like text to speech voice that they had. That's how like now this does their shit. Even... That's how now this does <laughs> now this does so the shit. I bad. thought that was fine, but it, it when it ends and it's like boom, Jurassic World Dominion. Andy just leans over to me and goes, "So uh, you're happy about this? <laughs> 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 you're, you're, this is what you wanted. You're happy about this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Greg, I, I'm going to save you for last on, uh, on this one. Uh, Andy, I'm right there with you where it's like it doesn't really get much worse than this. And it's such a bummer. I, I thought that after the end of the last one, I was like, cool, dinosaurs are on the planet Earth. That's at least a potentially interesting premise. And somehow they chose the least interesting way to go about dealing with it all. The locust plot, kind of cool, kind of potentially, cool. Yeah. but I don't think it ever got sure. there. Um, I think that the the two things I can say about this movie that I did legitimately enjoy at all to any extent, one was the uh, the Malta chase scene where the raptors are chasing the motorcycle and the van and stuff. That it never awesome. got my blood pumping, never got it running, but it was kind of like jogging a little bit. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, there was at least some – some fun here so you and felt something i <laughs> felt <laughs> something yeah. if nothing else it was a it was a well choreographed action sequence that i thought like when he when he rides it onto the the plane and then you know i didn't see the i was like oh how are they gonna get this thing off and then the dirt bike kicks the velociraptor off the plane i was yeah. like that was a cool yeah somebody thought about that you could tell that was the thing they spent a lot of time thinking about yeah so that whole action scene Maybe i was the like the only thing they thought about that might have been movie. the only thing they think about. <laughs> yeah but the other thing that i legitimately did like was jeff goldblum period i feel like you know he shot a lot of shots and i think that they didn't always hit but i think that the ones that missed made the ones that hit hit harder for me and it felt like this was the first time we've actually had the character from the first movie back um as ian malcolm where we've seen him in other movies lost world he felt a little bit weird where they just like kind of gave him a bunch of kids and like a weird plot with gymnasts and shit uh but with this it kind of just felt like okay he's back in the jacket he's back to who we remember him being just uh, good, older yeah. um and he just buttons his shirt up like yeah, was just dumb hilarious. shit like that got me it is exactly it's like they kind of did all the things and sure it's just nostalgia pandering but I think that they allowed him to have fun and just kind of be full Jeff Goldblum. And you can't not like that. And I think it's proof. This movie is proof that Jeff Goldblum is just entertaining despite how much shit is around him. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you kind of just let him be him, which Fallen Kingdom, even in his cameo, never really did. He kind of just read a script, you know, yeah. like a, a monologue script. Uh, but yeah, those are really the only two nice things I can say about this. I, I was really let down by pretty much everything like this would go on my list of worst things we've ever in reviewed um and i think a lot of that has to do with how much thrown away potential was there as well like so much money was put into this this was being billed as like the end of this jurassic era and we're gonna get the cast of the two trilogies together and i think that they they literally just did that by definition i don't think they did it in any cool way no one's ever gonna remember parts of this movie that fondly i don't think that there's any standout moments that Thinking back on it, we're a week out since we watched Fallen Kingdom, and I'll never forget that stupid log neck dying in the smoke. You know what I mean? For better or worse, 
I will remember that moment. I don't think I'm going to remember any single moment from this movie. Um, You're not going to remember. I had a rough time, but go when for it, Greg Miller. The T Rex is knocked down. It looks like he's dead. And I'm looking, and I almost leaned over to Andy. I'm like, this motherfucker's not dead, Andy. Don't worry about it. But he looks dead. And then what happens? Edward Scissor Dino Hands shows up and he's over there. And then the carnivorous, whatever the fuck, Gortastic Carnivore, they keep calling him the world's biggest carnivore. I get it. He's big. He goes to fuck that guy up, and then the, they take off, light on the T-Rex's eyes. It looks like he's dead. looks like poof, he's alive. T-Rex gets up like, not on my watch, motherfucker. I'm the star of this film. Shoves him into Edward Scissor Dino Hands, and then fucking roar. I'm like, yeah. There you go. <laughs> By the way, the Edward Scissor Dino Hands, terrifying. Awesome. Those things were scary. The only cool That's thing about, about the movie. movie. That part and, was, and that you part know was what? legit scary. I'm turning a corner on Feathered Dinos. I'm no, turning a corner. Don't give into the agenda. Andy, I'm turning a corner on Feathered Dinos. I'm turning a corner, everybody. I'm announcing right here, right now. When I see this fucking weird ass, like when it gets closer to bird territory, way creepier, way scarier. Yeah, they're scary. When it's like reptilian, Talons. I think it's just like it's like a scary dino. And that's just what we've always known them to be like. Sure. Like it looks like a big lizard, right? We've mm -hmm. seen this before. But when it is encroaching into bird emu fucking kind of territory, off awful looking. It's that terrifying. big ass. One that was like, I think it was blind, right? Um, I assume yeah. so because it didn't yeah. see her. It was like sniffing her, or like yeah. When we got, I, like, they could have done a better. I wish I would have known that ahead of time. It took me a second because it was like when he walks by and he's got like the uh, milky white eyes. I I saw that, but I didn't immediately think, oh, blind. And right. then when it was doing like echolocation, oh. she was crawling. I was like, oh, okay. They could have done something. I thought mm -hmm. of like drop in a, he a heads up that we got a blind uh, the di this dinosaur that is blind because again they go back so many times to and our sound balance is bad and there's no captions so i have no idea what the fucking world's largest carnivore mm -hmm. is but they kept being like oh the gore-tech he's the world's largest carnivore it's, uh, the gore -tech. It's twice, huh? yeah when i see it, like i get it all right cool thank it you. was like, like the giga allosaur right i think that's what kevin was saying it up. yeah gigawatt giga allosaur yeah 1.20 anyway i i thought that dinosaur looked badass i was like the only cool thing about this movie i think um just its design and Maybe how. when the T-Rex goes through the circle and it's like the logo, but he's not a dinosaur. Oh, man. He's not bones. He's a dinosaur. Imagery, dude. Imagery. Mm. Yeah, real, real quick, Greg, before we get to your full thoughts on this, at, speaking of this dinosaur situation, like I feel like this movie did the same thing that the last couple have done, including like going back to um, even three, where it's like, okay, cool. It always has to be the T-Rex versus whatever the new big bad one is. And I feel like this movie did the worst version so far of introducing us to the new versions and why they exist. And like, I got confused to when it turns into a triple threat match at the end, which like on paper should be cool. Uh, but looking at that match, I'm like, who exactly are these guys? We have Edward Scissorhands, but is the other one someone we've built up in another movie? Like, I don't even know. So it kind of just becomes noise at some point you know that point's pretty early that uh and i think that it's such a weird call to just sideline blue from this entire movie it's yeah like, right it's like yo you're gonna reunite everyone's favorite cast members of the entire franchise and you're just literally gonna leave blue at home no no guys greg miller what'd you think overall you know tim i'm known for a lot of things <laughs> 2015 trending game of the year yep specifically 2016 South by Southwest, some kind of gamer. I forget what it was. I don't know. The Ooh, coming up on eight years for trending gamer. Yeah. And then they wiped the record clean at 10. <laughs> 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 I'm also known on Twitter for something called hashtag hard truths, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it breaks my heart to tell the other worldies like this is just not a good film. This is oh. not a good one. You know what oh. I mean? Like we come off of Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom, a great movie, right? I don't know if you can see it, Andy. It was dark when I came to the theater. My shirt here for Fallen Kingdom says, the park is closed. Yeah, oh, shit. Blown up, remember? But, and, you know, again, you stupid Jurassic Park fans who've never been able to let it go got what you wanted with World, right? Yeah. We're going to make Jurassic Park again. Here we go. Dr Fallen Kingdom, they said, you know what? We're going to make a weird-ass horror movie that'll be funny for good reasons and bad reasons. And we looked at stuff like this and we said, you can make a horror movie, but when I see old Longy Neck over here, right? And he's dying, getting blown up, I'm going to be sad about it. And then this one, yeah, they were like, you know what? We're going to make a heist flick. We're going to make a heist flick with giant grasshoppers. Someone should have stepped in and stopped them. Because this just, it doesn't, it's a, it's not a, this is not a combination we need. Yes, Laura Dern breaking in to get, like, not to mention, like, it is like, it is like when you are a kid and you do something wrong and then you blame somebody and it's so clearly you. Mm -hmm. Like when they're like, oh my God, 
all the fields are being eaten except biofuel attacked or whoever they are, right? And it's like, I need to get in there and get proof. I'm like, do you? Yeah. Do you? You don't think that that's a smoking gun enough that everyone's yeah. like, hey, this is kind of fucked up, right? Like, why would you make it so obvious? Why wouldn't you be three or four different kinds of seeds don't get eaten? No, no, it's just ours doesn't get eaten. Like, hmm, all right. And so, like, this infiltration angle of, like, why would this, you ever think this would work? And I, like, I, again, like, there's, interesting like neat moments like i like the two cappuccinos and then when he's like jeff goldblum like takes her and talks and it's like this is super fucking bizarre and stupid but i'm all right for it whatever and then they go down like there's not gonna be cameras on every fucking inch of everything that they're gonna get away with this at all and then they're on the hyperloop and they you know tim cook stops the hyperloop they get off and rather than just stay in the hyperloop rather than just sit there and be like all right well something's wrong it'll be booted up in a second no, we'll get off, which apparently was Tim Cook's like whole thing because he doesn't send du- dudes right away. He doesn't say they get off and they start tre- sneaking past these dinosaurs that are there. And then they, if you remember, it's never referenced. No one mentions it. Maisie picks up a human skull and throws it at the dinosaur, indicating that like this has been done before. This, this is, is how sense. Tim Cook just gets rid of people. <laughs> Put them in the Hyperloop, stop them over at the old Mohawk station, and these motherfuckers yeah. get eaten. <laughs> the Spinosaurus station. Yeah, I was like, is. all right. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, the, the, the biggest problem, right? Again, you want to look at something like Fallen Kingdom, a hell of a film that got done wrong last week, right? 10 out of 10. Yeah. I can remember it. I can remember things I liked and didn't like about it and all these different things. You know, like it is a struggle to remember this long fucking ass movie we watched last night. When Andy checked his watch, I noticed it too. And I was so glad he did. Cause I was like, how, what is going on? And then I forget what evolves, uh, what happens. And then Andy Lee's like, it's still going. Like we're still, we're still doing this fucking movie. <laughs> and they kept yeah. cutting back and forth. to okay. useless scene after useless yeah, really scene, did. man. Wait, so I don't, I have to get the plot together in my brain right now. And some of the stuff I kind of think I imagined, but I want to check in with you guys to see if it was actually in the film. Please do. Okay. At one point, is there a way too well-dressed lady with a laser pointer killing people with just the yeah, laser pointer? Oh, okay. That was First off, time three. out. That's Her that woman from Severance. She's great in Severance. And she, yeah, she is. She's yo, not good you, in this. <laughs> oh, you mean the human version of the spy lady in Incredibles 1? Yes. Oh, that's, oh my God. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's a good pull. Yeah. Um. This, this, she just left the movie. <laughs> sure, she was done. What else? Like, look good. She, she was in season uh, two. <laughs> We're in season four. <laughs> man, her killing people with a laser pointer was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Leaving in, my life. in one less one last second point at Chris. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, yeah, when she's bringing her hands up, like, do it, I'll shoot. <gasps> Any wow. other questions, Nick, of things that might be fever dreams? Um, no, I just wanted to bring that part up. Good. That was good. pretty much. Oh no, yeah. I'm sorry. Was there a moment where locusts, even though they were on fire, kept yeah. flying for miles and then just <laughs> dropped Burned wherever they needed gun. to? And then someone stabs one of them like it's an hors d'oeuvre and feeds it to a Tyrannosaurus Rex knockoff. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Just double yeah. checking that mm-hmm. we got yeah. the Costco um, snacks out of the way. So we're gonna try our best to talk about the plot of this movie. But before we do that, let me tell you about our sponsors. Are people still trying to make plans with you this summer as if you aren't booked and busy already? You're just gonna have to tell them to try again in the fall. You've got pool days, pride parades, bachelor parties, and beach vacations waiting for you because when you're living your best life, the last thing you wanna worry about is butt sweat. I'm Greg Miller and my butt never sweats because I wear MeUndies. You've heard it a million times. I like MeUndies so much with my first pair. I bought a whole bunch more and threw away the rest of my underwear. They're the best. MeUndies has the lightest, most breathable fabrics to keep you cool and comfortable wherever you go. From undies to bra to socks, to loungewear, to swimwear, you can find something for all your plans. MeUndies also releases new prints all the time, like their limited edition Pride collection. Find your ultimate summer comfort in sizes extra small to 4XL. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. For a limited time, if you sign up for their free-to-join MeUndies membership, you get 25% off your first membership item. To get 15% off your first order, 25% off your first membership item, and 100% satisfaction Satisfaction guaranteed. Go to meundies.com slash kinda funny. That's meundies.com slash kinda funny. 
No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you've got bills due. Good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days earlier with direct deposit. That's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and generally just feel good about your money situation. But Chime is about more than just getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account. So what are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. Get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at Chime.com slash KF Games. That's Chime.com slash KF Games. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancor Bank or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on your payer. Eddie Cortez, <laughs> one last time. Bring us home. There's an anger to this. Yeah, <laughs> there really is. I I I, 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 I don't like, him. I untuned my guitar so drastically for this. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's just dive right in. Bryce Dallas Howard, Jurassic World, Dominion, Fallen Kingdom Park. Bryce Dallas Howard, full on eco terrorist now. Just randomly, she's got she's got the the balaclava. Everyone's going in. They're going covert up, and she's just stealing baby dinosaurs everywhere. Because guess what? Dinosaurs have penetrated everything. Tim, they're in our parks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're in our cars. Maybe we don't know where the fuck these dinosaurs are. But <laughs> Love everywhere. compartment. Open it up. <laughs> so at one point, at one point, <laughs> and did I imagine this? Or at one point at the end of the film, was a little girl just playing with a little baby dinosaur that that looks super dangerous. Dude, right? that was ridiculous, man. Because we've seen these little guys throughout the movies, and like, sure, one of them kind of sweet. A group of them, it's going to be a problem. Terrifying. But even the beginning of this movie shows one of them being terrified to this little child. And I love that it's like character development. By the end, we're living with the dinosaurs. Cool. Coexisting, man. We're coexisting. Great. Yeah, at no point would we have to do something. I See, I was hoping this movie would be like a little bit more about like there's two factions that, that we have to kill the dinosaurs because now they're killing humans. Like the pterodactyls alone, like taking down airplanes and stuff. I thought we were going to get into that, but apparently we just we're just coexisting with these massive behemoth things. I digress. They the, go um, into this illegal. I, I want to say farm. real quick that the uh, this now this thing mm-hmm. segment that we got, it should have been just an online video. That okay. oh right, I that happened before the movie came out. Like we should have just it only. Go- it it only was that, or well, it, it wasn't was only. It was clearly in the movie as well. But uh, right. there was a, a short film that was released in I want to say 2018 called Battle of Big Rock that um, was like a in between Fallen Kingdom and this, and it documented like the first uh, time dinosaurs and humans kind of interacted in a bad way outside of the parks, and it ended with like that montage of like the people getting married with the doves and the pterodactyl coming and the little girl with the little thing. And like a lot of the footage from that was actually from that short film. So okay. I wonder if, if like test screeners were like, we don't know what's going on. So like, let's add this really weird catch up to the beginning of this movie. Okay. Well, that's it, what it, we get. And the narration's terrible and the performance is terrible. And I'm not kidding when it says, <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say it sounds like the text, the speech that people do on social media. That's how like, she sounds. Like. Yeah. She always does those videos. That's, that's that how her? the, now this video sounds. That's her. Okay, that's a huge. That's an actual human being. That's not yeah. an AI. That's that's taking over my brain. <laughs> cool. Um, it's not great. So anyway, we go and we got Justice Smith there, and we got uh, uh, the other the other lady, and they're like, "Listen, we're tired of breaking into things and illegally with you, so we'll call the jobs." In. We yeah, we're gonna go get jobs. Justice Smith, of course, go gets a job. At the CIA at, the, at their new um, dangerous dinosaur and and Harry Potter division or whatever the fuck they have there. And uh, exactly. they're like, "She's like, why don't you go get uh, Owen to help you out?" And she's like, "I don't know my relationship." With Owen's a little bit weird, um, but it turns out it's not. It's actually just a very stable relationship yeah. with Owen. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> She's like, like, I don't know how you only... define it now. I'd be like, I would define it as you guys are happily married and living yeah. with a kid. <laughs> no, like, she doesn't say it's weird, but don't doesn't Justice Smith and Danielle Pineda think that their relationship's weird? Yeah, yeah they not said, her. Yeah, but to which Bryce Dallas Howard doesn't respond but i'd be like oh no we're actually in a really good place like we're raising a child together and like we seem pretty in love and at no point do we have any conflict together do they seem in love 
Yes, yeah, in this I movie, they sure do. in this one, they do. Yeah. yeah, which like I think that this is just ridiculous that these characters that know them would question it this much based on what they show us the rest of this movie, where it's like, look, Joe, I'm right there with I'm you. Nice I don't life. believe in it. The chemistry is horrible. <laughs> but this movie, unlike the last ones, is like, no, they are together and they have a child. God damn it, the thing that Alan Grant could never have. Exactly, damn. Alan, Alan and Ellie, they missed out on that, and thank God they did. Uh, we're gonna skip around here a little bit. At one point, uh, when, I think we cut over to the field now, and we get this terrifying locust scene and i think these two little kids do a great job that is fucking terrifying when the yeah. kid yeah. has to grab the pail and put it on the locust i'm like no yeah. no this is death for me this is where i just go like, i close my eyes and i hope it's fast um cut on over to montana or wherever me they and are. greg Whoa. have laughed several times by now by the way like oh my god so many times <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's hard to contain my laughter because i just hear like i just hear like the <laughs> <laughs> the wheeze laughing oh, i, I was laughing. wheeze laughing as soon as we hit the the splash screen and that got Kevin going too. That's where Kevin will get the. <laughs> yeah, you See, all, the problem you is, and correct, Kevin correct me if I'm wrong about this, guys. Like, please do, huh? Andy and and uh, Greg specifically. Sure. But like, you wouldn't recommend people go watch this because it's so bad it's worth watching to laugh no. at, right? No, it's no. more the laughing at that you guys knew that this in review was about to be a fucking. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. I. I. It, this was not a. Uh, it's it's fun because it's bad. This was one of those that like. If you can have like if you have any affinity for this franchise because you know that these movies are not good and except the last one which Greg loved by the way but um I call it was a bad good movie if you can convince if you can convince like five of your friends to go to all laugh together then do that but don't go like see it with a, a spouse or with a dude I would just go laugh together we're laughing together because we know we're like locked in it's our jobs yeah there's no getting out of it for us you know what i mean yeah yeah i think if you stumble to the movies after like a bottomless brunch you could have a good time (laughs) with this yeah and that's about it we love to keep them crying yeah so uh we'll we'll skip ahead a little bit here at some point ellie gets recruited and it gets uh it gets well known that they're like listen uh, all our crops got eaten but the biosyn crops that are not eaten those are the ones not getting eaten ellie's like oh my god if I were a betting person, I would bet that Biosyn is responsible for this. And the lady at the farm's like, sincerely, no, no shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, sincerely, no shit. But she's like, but we got to get proof of this. Uh, so we got to go on a caper together and I got to find someone that's going to go help me out. We cut back over to Montana or wherever they are. And Owen is herding bronchiosauruses or whatever those. <laughs> Andy, what are those animals? Uh, those are. Uh, th- no. Those are. Uh, I don't know. Dilop- Dinosaurs. Dang, I forget. I it forget. doesn't matter. We've got Damn horses and dinosaurs and living together, uh, and they managed to get one, and that's super cool, of course. Uh, Is it? I mean, he, like, breaks no. them. Like, I understood he trained the raptors from birth, but now he's out there doing the horse shit. That was another, like, hysterical <laughs> laughing thing for me yeah. when he was <laughs> down time. and got up, and he's talking. And he's, oh, my God. <laughs> Every time they do that, like, they did the hand. Everybody want what's with the hand thing? Why did this become a cultural it. phenomenon? That's I know we're do. skipping ahead, but when it's Maisie at the end <laughs> and Ellen ran behind her, I just like lost my shit and it took me a very long time to recover. It was so yeah. bad. Uh, I was speaking of Maisie, we cut over and she snuck out. She's gone into town to help them get a bronchosaurus out of the construction <laughs> zone. And she knows, I don't know, man. A bronco. They say a lot of names here. <laughs> Ford bronchosaurus. Uh, and then she comes back and they're mad because, of course, poachers have seen her now and that's going to be a whole thing. Uh, she comes dead, back. Dead, she dead, dead. Yeah, the guy, this the evil guy who's just like watching. Yeah. Dude, straight uh, up. Like when we watch Jurassic World 1 and we get Vincent D'Onofrio, you're like, that's one bad motherfucker. Like he's going to be bad. No one trusts him. It's going to get fucked up. This one, oh. you, you see this guy, you're like, okay you're just pure evil like it's so far past even a question that it's like we're just seeing this guy we're like yeah you're gonna hunt this this clone human and some dinosaurs and like honestly just fucking get him i don't care throw a bike off a bridge it'll make me laugh which is exactly what happens but of course before we do that we get introduced to blue and blue's baby which is beta love Um, it just a shout out to beta i named her okay like when (laughs) <laughs> like when did this happen when right you just, now. Dropped the thing out just now just you know how kids go man these kids are like hey see that thing that's a yeah, walrus you're know. like no that's a fucking prius that's what that call that's it's a parasol parasol parasolophus parasolophilus I'm Polly. Well, I'm saying that way wrong. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Although, uh, Nick did Nick did send me an image on Slack uh, titled Dino Boner. <laughs> And there's a, a, a diagram of a, 
of a like a life site. Here's what a lady would be next to this gigantic dinosaur. And there's a bone just kind of really precariously placed. <laughs> like, yeah. Like uh, just yeah. on its own. And Nick said, uh, what do you think this bone is for? <laughs> <laughs> we have fun here everyone uh some stuff's just for you andy anyway uh they get she gets kidnapped and they throw the thing off the thing and uh and then he's like oh no i know who that is that's so and so he's bad news he's part of the mclean clan or whatever uh we cut over to this a guy's dig. a fucking joke too like <laughs> yeah. we, we cut over to a dig. Now, i'll tell you one thing right now everyone uh, fairly well utilized as far as like what the what the material dictates Sam Neill, on the other hand, kind of just gets left behind in a lot of these scenes. Specifically in this first scene, he's supposed to, he's like giving a lecture of some sort. And you think it's going to be, like not a lecture, but he's like, he's saying some stuff to the people that are around him that are helping him out with his dig. And they're all on their phones. And I thought this was going to be a good moment of like character for him where he was yeah. going to say like, hey, the paleontology is really about this. Because like, he starts off with like, why do we paleontology? Because, you know, we got to get it. And then and everyone's on their phone. I was like, oh, he's going to realize he's a relic. And yet, and then they just cut the scene off. They're yeah, like, dude. awesome, it's here for you. And it's very weird. Dude, such a bizarre cut right there. Like, I don't, it's clear what they were trying to do. They were trying to show people that were on their phones and not listening. And yeah, you do yeah. think he's going to say like, Hey guys, come on! This is blah blah. Right. This or is have a moment and be like, trail off. Yeah. Damn, the world's kind of leaving me behind, or whatever. But it really did just seem like they were filming the cast and crew, like on break <laughs> while he's talking. It, it's such an and there's a number of these scenes that like it cuts to the next thing, and I'm just like, what happened? What what did we just witness? Maybe it was a sound balancing, you know? It it might have been. I don't know. Either way, it was it was awkward. Um, Ellie Sattler comes to visit him. And I got to tell you one thing right now. If there is any reason to go see this movie, it's Laura Dern. Laura Dern, just in my opinion, Ray of Sunshine. You can tell she enjoyed reprising this role. It seemed fun. Love the high waisted Love pant Dern. suit they got her in the entire time. Just dialed and that in. Cool, like long jacket. Yeah, with all that. She just looks sleeves. cool. Yeah. It's fun. How did you feel about them having her do the sunglasses move this time when she looks at all the locusts? You know what I mean? She did no, the whole. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Really? I didn't they spent five man. minutes doing it. Yeah, that, that might have been one of the times where I went to the bathroom and just had a nice little chat with the guy <laughs> slinging the candy the behind the uh, that concession was a, stand. Yeah, it was a major like eye roll. Like, no, don't do this right here. You don't deserve this right now. Like, you've lost goodwill. Like, there's a moment later on when they're like, "Oh, you're Owen. You were at Jurassic you're you World. you train raptors. You you worked at Jurassic World, both of y'all." And Jeff Goldman goes, Jurassic World, hmm, okay. not a fan. But don't act like that movie was made by other people that you didn't agree with where they <laughs> no, took the story. Like, up, that man. movie sucked, and so does this <laughs> fucking movie. Who, who are you? Don't, like, it was weird, weird. Strange. Strange to be fair. But she's like, listen, I got to recruit you into this thing. We got to go to this, uh, to this Biosyn uh, area. We got to sneak in. We got to get proof of this locust. We got to do it. And then we're going to expose this massive corporation for who they really are. And he's like, how did you get an invite to this? She goes, I got I got people in high places. Uh, then we cut over to I forget how they figure out that Maisie's in Malta. But apparently they figure out she's in Malta. And we all start laughing because how many times we heard Johnny talk about Malta. Now I want to go around the table. Is this what you imagine Malta would look like? I did not I realize no. that Malta was the place I that Tom Cruise was... loves to drive. You know, yeah. I feel like we've seen him drive <laughs> in these exact streets so many yeah. times, but without I, Raptors. I don't know Doesn't if it's it... where Johnny knew where Malta looks like. like I don't know if Johnny knew this is what Malta Johnny, like. Johnny may or may not. Now, this is no disrespect to Malta. Uh, Malta looks beautiful, beautiful Mediterranean style uh, place. Johnny may have been thinking this was more like um, uh, Monte Carlo. Monte oh. Carlo, oh, yeah, Monte Carlo. Where they do the races. Yeah. But uh, hey, you know what? You got to stick with the joke. Greg Miller from kind of funny. Yeah. Justice Smith, remember? He works at the CIA. So oh, right. the, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard hit him up. Go over there. He shows the guy on the little iPad. Oh, he's in Malta doing a thing. Oh, and they flip through all those people. Do we, they... get, to see, we get to see Nick Miller again. Yeah, and the, yeah, oh, the, other, and the girl. other girl. Are and they... he's like, yeah, a bunch of us went into Intel or whatever undercover oh, right. shit after uh, this. And so this is the guy to help you. Then they go to this guy who I do not remember from the past two films, even though it's just the past two weeks. <laughs> I do not I remember this man. In, who's, I don't think which he was guy? in them. The guy they send to, the guy on the inside at Malta. Oh, that's the there. guy. That's the other trainer from oh, from Jurassic World, right? I mean, really, where they used to train I, I they used to train Raptors together, and now he's doing the other thing. 
Whoa, he's the one I would have. Like, I did not know. I that. didn't notice that either. Yeah, that makes sense. I, You're I right. You. I remember that. Remember, I, he's I the guy. The guy that that hides out in the boat and he like saves him. He has a one line where he's like, "Remember, he's like." Just like we used to do when we got the Raptors in the cage yeah, yeah. back in the day, and he goes, "I never yeah. did that. I couldn't do it." And he has to roll out of the thing, and it's oh, it's super yeah, cool. okay. They brought everyone oh, back. Um, everyone's okay. here. They land in Malta, and we get introduced <laughs> to this pilot. And uh, I got to tell you, if there's ever a character in a movie that just kind of exuded not caring about anything that's happening in this movie, I feel like it's this pilot character. And this is no disrespect to this actress. I think she's a great. I've seen her in other stuff. But whatever the, direction, her, yeah. whatever the direction was for her in this, she just plays everything like, oh, man, if I had a dollar for every time a Tyrannosaurus Rex attacked me, I'd have so much. It, there's, it just, there's just no sense of urgency. It's one of those where you look does. at her and like her, like she's got her like parents black and white photo on her, uh, I don't know, steering wheel. I don't know what you call that on a plane, but it's there. And it's like so clear that like she has also this huge backstory they probably had and filmed and did all this stuff and the fact that like she looks at Maisie and gets hung up on it right of like heart of gold i know or whatever but like there's a whole subplot there that they just dropped which they is just the best don't movie so yeah. fucking long but i also totally. like we're about to get to it but i i, I leaned over to andy again about this of just like all right i'm the tra- i'm the trainer from jurassic park all right so bryce dallas howard Chris Pratt, we're going in there. Don't fucking talk to anybody. Don't say anything. The one person Bryce Dallas Howard talks to is the woman who saw her daughter on the guitar yeah. Mac or whatever. I was like, ah, oh, Jesus, this is fucking Very flick. strange. Uh, that person decides to help her later. I forget why. Uh, we go to the underground. There's no good reason why. Yeah. There, uh, yeah. <laughs> She's got, um, she got red in her ledger. She got red in her ledger. And then just the way this whole underground section looks is so comical. Like it, it looks. It, it, and this is no disrespect to the to people out there, but it looks like a video game. It looks like you're like, like it it's looks like in up. Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's it was it's weird, and I'm not sure why there's so many people who a know about this and b frequent this bazaar. But they did. They're down. Uh, they're, I mean, with the two, it's like backwater. This goes back to what I was saying about like the premise of dinosaurs are now out of the park. They're just in the world. Like, what could they do with that? Like, and I think I'm so hung up on it because earlier this year, I watched the Planet of the Apes trilogy with you guys for the first time. Badass. And those just got better and more intricate. And they just took the premise of the, like, what's the coolest thing we can do with it? And then they accomplished that. And I feel like this somehow with these Jurassic movies, we're like not even where the first movie ended off of the planet of the apes movies and getting to the scene where it's like really besides a montage thing the only time we actually see humans dealing with dinosaurs like in in humanity and it's this like bizarre area that just doesn't make any type of sense like the fact that they went the like back alley like there's going to be raptor fights or whatever dinosaur fights like i get that but why is that also the same place that a random dude's like holding a, a pterodactyl like a parrot and like like, what are all these people doing? They're cooking dinosaur meat. Like, it just seems like a bunch of fucking dinosaur perverts in this area. And like, yeah. I just, I know that that could be a thing. I just don't buy that it is a thing. <laughs> I know that there could be dinosaur that. perverts. Uh, well, they go there and they get caught up in this, uh, uh, in this plot from a very, very, very well dialed in lady to sell some, some super soldier velociraptors. They were called something else, but I'm just going to call them velociraptors, but they bark right. like dogs. So uh, I, I, I think this, Whatever this character was, was just what a choice. Like the wow, most it was a cartoonish villain lady. <sighs> I could not believe that they presented her in this movie. And she just seems like she's from a different planet and different movie completely. And then they get rid of her so fast as well. Super fast. <laughs> Which is like, thank God, but still Similar. is like really bizarre. So it's so like, so this person obviously is like a kind of a one dimensional. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at the actress's name, but a one dimensional sort of B villain, right? Not is, 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 is it, is her treatment worse or is black tie, black shirt guy at the end's treatment worse? Where Campbell Scott just looks at him and goes, what are we going to do? The guy's like, I don't know. And then that's yep. the last yep. we see that yep. guy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like we got to do something and this guy who's set up to be like the right hand man the guy that kills people for tim cook is just like i'll be honest with you man this is i up until last <laughs> week i was the bar- i was the other barista like i don't know what's going on here i digress it doesn't matter uh lady pen lady with a laser gun lasers everyone and then i guess gets away who cares uh and then uh i i fucking hold on i fucking hate the Silly oh hijinks of suddenly Owen and the guy are now the ones in the fighting pen 
while yeah. dinosaurs oh, well, are roaming loose yeah. and people are and still love, on the fighting pin like woo! like what the fuck the dude, is happening in this movie the dude gets taken down right he's got the one big dinosaur like up to his fucking oh. uh, elbow the other little dinosaur is gnawing at him and then the other big dinosaur comes out and like as they are all attacking and he's got the oh just stands over him i'm like yeah would you know the dinosaur come this from is then? what and this is the fifth this is the sixth Jurassic. like these dinosaurs are gonna fucking keep moving and going. Get the fuck out of their own. And that's totally. also the thing of like, you know, la- they definitely introduced last movie that all right, humans can outthink, outmaneuver, outroll dinosaurs. And so many fucking moves here. Like, you're not how getting about, away from this. Why is this happening like this? How about two minutes later when the cages fall off the truck and there's an armed squad of you have to imagine like mercenaries who are the good guys, right? Who's the CIA guys that were sent in there. Uh, by Justice Smith or whatever. Sure. And the cages open up and they get surrounded. It's like five on five from the Velociraptors. And these guys have handguns. They don't even open fire. And instead no. of opening, I don't actually know if anyone shot anything in this entire movie. If you go back and look, I bet one bullet wasn't shot. It was probably on I purpose. I think it's like, all tasers and shit. It's all, ta- yeah, it's all taser stuff or like, or like blow dart stuff. But literally, instead of leveling a gun at a CG dinosaur killing machine, they run all the in rank and file just to the side of what's happening and the other dinosaurs kind of wait for them to get just far enough away for it to be suspenseful and then they chase after them it's very weird very and weird. i think it's because they realize somewhere along the lines that this stupid subplot of trying to make dinosaurs into these weapons that you can sell is so it's interesting on a theoretical level until you have a dinosaur that's 10 feet away from a guy with a full magazine of nine like nine millimeter rounds that could just fucking shoot this thing It's just so, it just doesn't work. Anyway, we do kick off to what I think is probably the best action sequence in the whole movie, which is Owen versus the two Velociraptors on his dirt bike. I like how this is choreographed. I like that as they get out, the other two big dinosaurs are like eating random people who apparently can't see beyond their dude their the fucking guy in a bird scooter just enjoying malta oh, like it's like it's not go, like they just go, burst go. out they're on the fucking promenade like they've been they're there huge. long enough for you to be like oh i should fucking run away from these guys well as we and as by the way i guess that's got to be beth death right because like whatever who, what other fucking deaths are there that are cool uh i'd, I'd say the well, fucking the the edward says a hand oh that was yeah. Great, yeah i don't like that guy so i just can't get behind him uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm dead. I'm fucking. I'm dead ass right now. I do not like this I fucking Edward Scissorhands. I, I will not God. ever vote for him in a best death. Um, <laughs> I will say, Greg, just to just to your point about the promenade. One thing that we did just establish, if you remember correctly, and we went over this quite often, I made a point because I knew it would come back, is Thank that you. the bigger the dinosaur is, the more silent they are. That is how the T Rex can just come out of nowhere and say it all the time. So it's part of the. Di- I think when they were filling in gaps of dino DNA, they put ninjas in as well. Oh, that's wow. my other thing too. You sneak, watch sneak Blue and in, in Beta Hunt, and I'm like, you aren't. This deer should run. I've been around deer. All right, you walk close to they run, but you're not being quiet, Blue. You know what I mean? Like well, fucking get your shit. The together. fucking giant thing goes go go. Good. Looks down at the deer that is like, "What's up, homie?" And he just slaps. <laughs> I just got here. We're friends, right? We're all bros here. Yo, man, herbivore to herbivore, right? What up? Uh, I do like the fact that that thing was an herbivore because it swatted the deer and then and started eating some branches or whatever the fuck it was. Anyway, uh, this kicks off the sequence. He rides it and rides it right up to uh, the airfield. I had no idea. Yeah, which they wait for him and then he gets on and then off he'll we go be here to Biosyn. Uh, but before we get there, of course, Ellie and uh, uh, Sam Neill's character, who's Dr. Dr. Grant. Why do I not remember that guy's name? Alan Grant arrive, and he's like, how did we get in here? And they're greeted by uh, Ramsey Cole. And this actor, I thought, did a great job. I was like, I this like guy's really cool. I don't know what else he's really from, cool. but he should be in other shit because he was cool. Um, he's like, hey, greetings. We're going to tour you around this park. And I immediately, I'm just like, thank God I never went to tech. Would I have made more money? Sure. Would, would, would I have had stock up? Yeah, sure. But I hate all these people. And and then Campbell Scott shows up and he's like, uh, like bumbling and doing the thing that. Uh, what like, was this? You just go, just go away. Go what away. What was this? What was this sequence of Ramsey being, uh, uh, hey, you, you, you can walk with Ramsey. He's basically like me, but taller, younger. It was showing the respect, how much he respected him. It was awkward. But and then also, he's like, do you have a granola bar with my face on it? Or like some weird. My bar, bar. My, yeah, his food yeah. or whatever. And you're just like, and he's yeah. super bummed. It's like Danny's point. Like, there is definitely a he's subplot a that got cut of him turning into a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes more sense. Now, yeah. Maybe, it course, just, it seemed like. bizarre. And then, it, like, I feel like they were alluding to something is truly wrong here, other than this guy is just like eccentric and a weird billionaire genius guy. Um, but 
that even as they're walking like that scene plays out and all of us in the crowd are like what the fuck's going on and finally ramsey's like all right well follow me everybody and then bryce Dallas howard walks by the camera is like what like what the fuck was that kind of like telling the audience yeah that was weird so keep an eye on that but yeah you know what's really (laughs) weird too and i i'll I'll keep this brief because i know most of you don't understand the touchstone to this but for people out there listening that that have played the resident evil games like the original ones he reminded me of wesker a lot in the sense that like you clearly know he's bad and that he's hiding some shit and then as i was watching i was like 90 percent of the plot of this movie is just half of resident evil 2 and half of resident evil 3 like once they get to the labs underneath and then (laughs) here's this fucking train and there's like kids that are being cloned and experimented on all this shit i'm like this is just straight up resident evil from jurassic park like i nah not for me greg not for me not Not for for tim everybody my watch not on my watch uh they head in uh and we've already established there's some sort of like aerial defense network where there's a no-fly zone that keeps the pterodactyls out but if they want they can turn that off uh which uh but before they do that of course uh alan grant's like how did we get the invite to this again and he goes she goes oh i know i know it was from malcolm and he goes oh no not malcolm we cut over of course to just the only reason to watch this movie which is jeff goldblum <laughs> and jeff goldblum mm-hmm. of course is giving a speech to all the young he's the tech philosopher leaders. he's the on staff philosopher and basically just telling them that everything they're doing is bad and that the power of uh, genetics is going to destroy humanity and that they have to treat it uh nicely and these kids, this is another one of those scenes where I'm like, I think he wrapped his speech up, but when he ends, when he finishes, everyone just starts clapping. I was like, oh, we're done. Okay, that's, uh, <laughs> we're done. We're done here. Uh, of course, it's fun to see Alan Grant and uh, and uh, Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum all together. All three of these characters had such great chemistry in the first one, and now they're here, and that's something. Uh, he's like... <laughs> He's like, let's go get a exactly. cup of coffee. And 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 uh, Sam Neill's like, I'm bumbling. So leave me behind. So they leave him behind. And then he goes, here, take my little Fitbit and go down to the lower level of this highly secured, probably classified government, or not government, but uh, private corporate facility that has cameras that can probably see into your body at this point. Uh, and the locusts are on the fourth floor. I was just joking with you. Uh, I, 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 you know, there's a subplot here with him, whatever. So they go, cool. That sounds like a great idea. Off we go. Yeah. So this whole thing was really, really clumsy. And it's so, so indicative of how bad this movie is. Because to Greg's point, this was a great, or Joey's point maybe, great moment where the the, the foaming's happening and it's covering up the, the, the noise and like all that stuff. It's like, cool. Th- these are the characters we like doing cool things. I like that. But they under, they downplay it so much, or undercut it's what I'm looking for. Uh, so much by immediately having uh, Richard Parker come in and be like, Hey, uh, don't go that way. You're supposed to go this way. What it's like, we we know. Like, you don't need to tell the audience that again. Like, we understand where they're supposed to go. But now we understand he's in on it. But that was that was then, then telling us he's in on it. He was like, don't, that'd locus? be like if I said, whatever you do, you know, Tim, what the don't go to the Starbucks in my corner then. and get me a venti iced coffee because I then yeah. like, oh, Nick's in on this. Yeah, that was his. That was that was their little nod of saying like, even though that then catches the Alan Grant and Ellie by surprise when they go to get on Hyperloop. Which I was like, are you guys fucking morons? Like, he couldn't have been any clearer of like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't tell you what to do, but definitely wait, don't ever wait. do this. Yeah, yeah, in that yeah. in that moment, yeah, he's clearly letting the audience know, hey, I'm with well, you. It wasn't all. clear. Like, it like, wasn't that clear. But to Tim's point, it wasn't like he was like, you know, tip of the hat to your monocle. But I do think that was the intent. I I, I thought it was pretty clear for him being yeah, like, yeah, hey, totally th- here's. Clear. Hey, this definitely way's the don't escalator. go down don't, that one. Definitely don't go down that elevator because you'll need a wristband or whatever. And Kevin was like, what the fuck? That's like really obvious. I was like, oh, he's in on it, Kevin. And Kevin was like, really? And I was like, yeah, dude. He's fucking. Kevin goes, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wonders never cease. Yeah. And so then they do end up going down the Hyperloop, right? Is this where we get this sort of horror sequence with the spine? Uh, no, 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 we have to. No, we, we haven't done. We we're going to down locus. to the locust yeah, Andy, sample. Andy. Oh, motherfuck! Yeah. We're only forty minutes into this movie. <laughs> we haven't shit. even crashed the plane yet. We're gonna go up. <laughs> we're gonna go up to the sky, right? We're gonna go up to the friendly skies, and obviously, uh, Kayla, the pilot. I don't know what their plan was to get into here, but apparently their plan consisted of her trying to blackmail the the, the woman that the radio Never operator were. because they had a fun night so in Cabo weird. one night, and the lady's like, "Oh, she must be talking about a different Allison." And Campbell and the, Scott's like, and whatever. I, I, need and I was like, more. how did how did the Tim Cook guy hear that? Is she in the headset? Or? Yeah, how is he everywhere? <laughs> you know what I mean? He's everywhere. He's everywhere, Greg. You're so right. Everywhere. 
Anyway, uh, he says turn on the the turn back on the security system because this plane is bad. Air defense. Now, now everyone it, it, listening to this call is probably like, mm, I don't think it's that bad um, because they've kind of defined the fact that the that Alan Grant, whatever, doesn't matter. He says turn it on. Everyone's like, cool. I'll just kill these people because why not? We're, let's let's not question anything. We're about Apple, this. no big like deal. Normal human being, but yeah, whatever. Uh, so they do it, and guess what? The pterodactyls or whatever these big things are come and they tear the plane apart, and they only have one ejection seat. Because this is the Millennium Falcon and that little part. In the I wasn't expecting got shot company. Off. Exactly. And God, so he's like. so bad. So Owen, will, uh, Owen Grady pulls a, a Last of the Mohicans and turns to Madeline Stone and says, I will find you. I will find you. And it's an incredible <laughs> moment because they have to they have to jump through uh, the, the waterfall uh, as the bad guys come and get Madeline Stowe. But he does find her. But spoilers, her sister kills herself in that one. Oh, okay. that moment. So, sad. Very, very so this scene moment. kicks off, right? And. Here we have Bryce Dallas Howard ejecting her seat. She's flying, and the camera chooses to follow her every move. And there was a split second. There was a split second where I was like, this is about to be fucking awesome. And about one split second after, I was like, no one decided this could make the cut. It's just her spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. You're like, she's going to die. And then pterodactyls come in and fuck her up even more. You're like, she's definitely gonna die and then she keeps spinning and goes down through the trees and it doesn't die remember remember when they killed off samuel l jackson in the first one you're like i did not see that coming wow anyone can die in this and we're, we're beyond that uh joey, joey and well. Andy. um have you guys seen those rides at like mini golf places that has like the two things on either end and just like spins and like shoots mm. them all over the place i swear to god they put bryce ellis halliward on one of those and a camera in front of her and we're just like go and the it was not her. good. It did not uh did not evoke any did sense not wow you, right, Joey? Yeah. No. Yeah, I was it, just, like mostly confused and watching all of her facial expressions, but I didn't think she was ever gonna die. It, it was a stupid fucking decision, and it um it reminded me of the you know that there's that really cool sequence, and I believe Mission Impossible Rogue Nation where Tom Cruise and Simon Pegg are in the car and the camera's on them as the car is flipping. Yeah. Because they are physically spinning the car with them in the car, right? It's just, obviously, they're using green screen so they're not actually crashing a car, but it looks good because they're actually in there and like they're getting the effects. And this is just like some of the worst green screen special effects stuff. Like, holy shit, it looked awful. I mean, dude, it immediately brought me back to wait a minute, we're doing this again? We're using the exact same background from Jurassic Park 3's hang gliding scene, which oh. looked horrible in 1997 yeah. or whatever the hell that was. 2001, I guess. Ugh. Yeah, really, really bad. <laughs> well, it was bad, ladies and gentlemen. But she lands, and we got Edward's uh, scissor hands dinosaur. We have that whole scene, which I thought was a good scene. And she, and for whatever reason, Bryce Dallas Howard, who I, I assume now is a dinosaur expert, realizes that this thing can't see and just goes... Well, she was right up close to its eye, right? That makes sense. She must be like, oh, this eye's blind. Sure, that makes sense. I would, I would have the 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 presence of thought to probably figure that one out for myself as well after this traumatic experience of being shot out of a plane for the first time. But sure. whatever. Sure. Anyway, she has to dip her head, and we get that really cool shot where the thing's like screaming, and she's on like an inch under the water, like holding her holding her. They showed that, and out. I was like, oh, my, were they building up to that? And I was like, oh my god. Like I remember when we live reacted to this tra first trailer, and I made a, a little meme about that or whatever. I'm like, the how, how, that felt, was it 2020? How long have we been waiting for this fucking film? <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy. Would you believe if what you're talking about was no less than like three months ago? No way, yeah. impossible. Yeah, what you're no talking way. about was we did that. that I, I, I want uh, just for just for audio listeners, uh, uh, or for for video li watchers and audio listeners, uh, this dinosaur, which I really like. Um, it 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 kind of looks like a, a furry dinosaur, right? It's got a lot of feathers on it. And obviously, when we think of T Rex, we think of the little tiny baby arms, right? The little tiny baby yeah, arms. Of course, this thing had a gigantic neck, like an emu, and it had like a little beak at the end of it, like a clear kind of like beak, like uh, you know. And then its its arms were very long, similar to the damn the the uh, the Indominus, Indominus Rex right. arms, but then. 
no, I'm not exaggerating when I'm drawing these <laughs> claws on it. The claws are longer, almost longer than the length of its arms. Well, because they its were the front um, hands. They were the are... basically like the bones of feathers, but it didn't have wings, right? So if you think about like it being able to flap, yeah, or whatever, it, it kind of had that. Oh, sort of, that's you know, cool. You know what it reminded me of? Because we'll see another one later that has the that has the, the feathers on it, and it runs, but it has so it has a little claws, but it's got feathers on it. It reminds me of um, Wolverine's like. Uh, nemesis with the saber tooth saber tooth no oh. the, the lady uh lady uh oh, death strike. Strike. yeah it kind of reminded me of death strike that was pretty yeah cool. but anyway it Why was is it wearing very... um, sneakers i uh, didn't know how to draw the feet <laughs> makes sense. greg miller would you believe that it was february 10th 2022 no i don't i don't i refuse to believe that yeah yeah uh, uh. well well what else what, well would you believe that they survived this plane crash on this ice lake <laughs> <laughs> dude 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 like they impact and i was like oh okay they're underwater this is gonna be an interesting they're gonna do something with the hypothermia water rushing in how are we gonna get out chris pratt he climbs out dry as a bone <laughs> i turned to andy i'm like he's just dry as a bone mm -hmm. then he go in two seconds now feather man shows up chases them around blah 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 blah. they end up underneath the water right he comes back out there's one scene of him on the thing sitting there like oh man i'm wet and i'm sad then they pop back out they run as soon as they get on the metal grate dry as a bone again i'm like uh, what the fuck yeah well in, in greg you don't understand how air physics works that high up it dries you so fast it's like you I ever seen know. a freeze-dried uh snack tomato half yeah, yeah, that's that's how it works. Anyway, wow. feather thing is terrible, and apparently, feather apparently chickens can swim real fast. Like birds underwater can swim super fast. Dude, because this and, thing's a fucking mermaid, and it's sick as fuck. <laughs> like, to I thought this point, was thrilling. Like, I'm a fan of this guy. This this design. I, I, I could use some more backstory. Could use some more setup for this first, you know, character development. Uh, <laughs> but I did enjoy the fact that he was such a threat in in land, air, and sea. That's usually mm -hmm. my favorite type of animal threat. It's and when threat. he gets. Yeah, when he gets under the water and starts just zip zapping around, I was like, "Oh shit, this is cool. What the fuck's Chris Pratt gonna do?" But like, that's the lame part. Is like Chris Pratt, similar to the last movie when it's like the the gyrosphere goes off and like he just kind of uses his Kevin's nice. little Letterman thing to mm. pop open this thing that's supposed to protect him for dinosaurs. Like, it's a similar vibe of like, huh? Like the movie makers just had a cool thing and didn't know how to get him out of the situation. So the way he got out of the situation was just get out of the situation like just there was no the like yeah. anything else it's fine i don't believe it, that it, thing didn't kill chris pratt like no, there's, there's no way chris oh my pratt god not a chance the in the hell that that's what it's, especially as fast as it was moving underwater yeah He's dead to right it's it's just one of those things where it's like you've got a secondary character here and you give her nothing to do in that like she could have helped somehow or figured something she reaches out down and grabs him and superhumanly yanks him all the yeah, way clear it, of this it, thing it, coming at him at like <sighs> It's not super miles creative. An hour. And then they do the thing where they get onto the railing. And this thing, it, look at it. It's believable that human beings can outrun some of these things occasionally. But this thing's got this thing's got to run at 30, 40 miles an hour. I mean, this thing's catching them fucking fast. But I digress. They get but away the wings, from especially. Get, well, the wings were wet. Can't fly. Wet. Oh, um, but the air dry, they dry up really fast. Okay. They do yeah. dry really fast. Just like Chris Pratt did. Uh, meanwhile, while this whole thing's happening, Ellie and uh, and and Grant are down in the locust nest, and these things are terrifying. I would never be able to get in this room. Sorry, no, mm, not for me. Uh, we get a scene also with Doctor Wu and uh, Maisie, where Doctor Wu's like, "I knew your mom; she was super cool." <laughs> and by the way, anyone Wong, who's what had, up, bro? Anyone that's had anything to do with thinking about a dinosaur, seeing a dinosaur, <laughs> uh, any any sort of genetic engineering, uh, any college. Has apparently met Maisie's mom. They all know that Maisie's mom. Very this is, small. The, this is uh, the Star Wars universe. She, she they should have left it in BD Wong. Laura Dern being like, by the way, I know your mom. I'm like, oh god. No, no, no. She goes, I knew your mom. She she was a professor at the university I was at for like for a while. We became best friends. I didn't know we her. We only knew each other. Yeah, I didn't know her long though. I was like, wait, <laughs> what which one was it? Are you best friends, or did you just kind of anecdotally know this person that was like, it doesn't matter? Uh they so uh, <laughs> Maisie's like, I I don't I don't trust you guys. I understand what you're and uh, Dr. BD Wong's like, listen, dude, we fucked up. <laughs> Be cool with me, Maisie. Like, <laughs> like <my laughs> fucking mistakes here, guys. We fucked That's up. On okay. Me. Yeah. Uh, and Maisie's like, hey, what what was your plan? And Dr. Wu's like, oh, well, despite the fact that we're already a multi-trillion dollar corporation, we also wanted somehow to release a locust plague that would kill all of the grain 
and the food supply for our food supply on the world, except for the ones we wanted, killing millions and millions of people. But maybe after 20, 30, 40 years of this horrible, horrible event, we'll start to capitalize off of it. Similar well, to They how, were supposed to die pretty quick, right? It was just a sure. little test slide project. Let's put it this way. We're three years into a pandemic where a lot of people died and we st inflation's running fucking nuts and we still have not come back for that. And it, and they're like, ah, oh, three, 30 million people. It's going to be totally fine. Don't worry about it. Like, but this Nick, would have but Nick in real life, the world people still trying to capitalize off of our real life situation, you know? Yeah. Think but, um, I don't do this, this, in this. I don't know movie, by doing it by a, global famine is really, they caught, they were like, we're going to basically, I mean, demons are going to try to capitalize Earth. off of anything. I'm just saying. It's fair. It's not. It's not. Be all I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. When people capitalize off of things, usually they don't leave a fucking trail of breadcrumbs right to their front door and a yeah. signature on the crime that says I did this. This is such a stupid, stupid, like comic book villain plot line. Like we're gonna control. We're gonna starve everyone. And so I'm like, you're already. You have a fucking trillion dollar complex. In an ecosystem that you've made for, you have to have unbelievable power, amounts Nick. of money. It's just the, I don't know. The, but, the, but it's also one of those things where it's like, how do you get more than two people to sign on for this? Because somebody had to, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't matter. A lot of uh, yes men. A lot of yes men. A lot of yes men, I guess. Especially that, yeah, especially all the people working in the Yes nice, women, uh, in too, control in this room. society. Um, it's super dumb. Anyway, the plot, the plot <laughs> thickens. They get in there, they get the thing. Maisie's like, listen, I understand what you're saying. I don't want any part of this. I don't want to save the world. I just want to save this velociraptor that may or may not kill me. So she mm -hmm. saves Beta, lets it loose. Beta runs around, doesn't matter. Also, uh, can we talk about how they just have these, like, fucking bracelets that unlock everything just laying around and they don't think, mm -hmm. like, hey, maybe we shouldn't leave one with this captive girl that we're trying to study? Oh, my God. That's an well, again, another... Again, Wong thought he made a good... He thought he made his points. He was also he wearing a we card again. And people hey, who card I just need to get inside your DNA that yeah. your mom fixed so I can yeah. fix these things. And he's like, this is what I'll atone for. And it's like, you've been bad for multiple movies. I don't know, like, but the grasshoppers are the one where like, I got to atone for this. Like, yeah. I, I he thought he made his face. Real quick, I'm sorry too, everybody. I, everybody's, you've all seen uh, this cool Jurassic mm -hmm. World Fallen Kingdom shirt, right? Have you yeah. seen it? Yeah. No, yeah. Cool. I'm chilly. I'm going to put on a jacket, but I wanted to make sure before I did okay. that it had been voted cool. for the job. record as I did expense it. <laughs> I just want to say, company money. so happy that this is where it ended. I'm happy that he's not too hot right now because I thought that thing was just coming off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been a while since we've seen Greg Miller's <laughs> chest, his sizzle uh, chest. Joe, you're so right, though. Like this. All right. Here it is. Here it is. Here we go. Reset the counter. <laughs> it's just the um... days without incident. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> it's this. It's such a stupid way to write yourself out of this moment. Because um, it, it. It's yet another dumb moment you can point to and say. Wow, they really didn't have any other ideas here. They really didn't have any other ways to get her out of there other than one of the characters leaving the key fucking around. Like it's President most, Evil, I'm telling you, man. In most sequences, you you have somebody fucking getting a little magnet on the thing and fucking like you know, pulling. This is just like, well, we got nothing else. So here's how she's going to escape. She takes the, you know, bracelet that's just been left in the wide open. Like, man, do they... Do they give a shit at all about making an interesting movie at all? Like, it it's really kind of like offensive. <laughs> you look cool yes. right now, Gray. You look like you're on a cover for uh, like Avengers, Ghostbusters yeah. Day. Don't forget everybody. Yeah, yeah. Does when Ghostbusters that? Have, have a day? It's today. Ghostbusters Day is today. Mm, okay. So anyway, so yeah, she escapes. Uh, she runs Joe, away. Yeah, okay, by the way. <laughs> they announced and an animated I, series so far. There's a big announcement from Jason Reitman and team coming tonight during the screening of Afterlife down in LA. I was invited to it, everybody, but of course we have stupid Jeff Keeley Day tomorrow, so I couldn't go. Um, Didn't Afterlife already come out? Yeah, but it's a screening on, on the on the Sony lot with the Ecto oh, and some people God. and stuff like that. And they're gonna make some big announcement. I know. If, this, I know a couple of announcements. They haven't happened. Shit. I, who gives a shit right now? <laughs> Let's end this. Oh, <laughs> you're more you're excited more to talk about this. Talk about. We could do it again if we full stop. Tim, welcome to in Inner Sanctum. Right? Nick's the mm -hmm. one recapping the movie. When he comes back, he he's remember. old and confused. Just jump ahead. Nick, you left off with the T Rex fighting the fucking uh, other thing. He was in when the logo. On the helicopter. Let's just see what he says. <laughs> Let's just see. Or we can even say we kept going. We can say we kept going. 
We're Holy at the shit. Spinosaurus scene right now. They already did okay. the locust thing. They did the locust thing. The locust went buck wild. They escaped, and it was fucking Fire like oh, thrilling or whatever. It's gross. Uh, but the Spinosaurus scene really reminded me, Tim, of when you watch commercials of a theme park. Yes. And they show you, yes. and there's like a dolly camera that zooms in, and like a dinosaur, like, like if you go to Studios Florida, you'll get all this and that. Yeah. But don't forget mom's piece of the pie. And these, but I love that in this one, it was all like mom's the piece same of the pie. Ride. <laughs> 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 think about it. Keep going. Keep going. But anyway, like, yeah, this sequence was really creepy. I thought. I thought it was like kind of creepy. It was, like, I thought it was creepy, creepy too. But, yeah. but but it was like it, it did the movie thing that I just really don't like, where it's like we're in this place that. It's not well lit, but it's lit well enough that, like, if there was one that they didn't see, that'd be one thing. But, but they every see corner, one. Every time they're, they're surrounded. Like, the they're surrounded. And it's all the same homie just chilling. I'm like, at least have some difference here. Like, it just got so repetitive where it's like, I it went from scary to like they got this like it's totally fine so quickly <laughs> the stakes for this bed. movie yeah. are so low because I never feel like anyone's ever in danger no, of anything. They're not. Um, yeah. And then they, do we get to the part where they get pinned against the gate? That we are. That's right that's where we are. Really Jeff Goldblum's like, um, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just take a random whack at guessing the code to this. But instead of having him actually use the smarts or anything we've learned along the way, the other character just types it in for him. And he's like, "Cool, I can't believe that worked. That's crazy." It, there was like, again, sound so wasn't lazy. great. There was no punchline to that, right? There wasn't like Zero. he's like, no. "Maybe it's my birthday." People, oh, it was my birthday. Like, no, right? Nope. Yeah. I, I thought well, I think the idea type in like 1994 or six or whenever the original movie came out, but I don't know. I, I think it was just attention. like he's a chaotician. You know what I mean? That's what all these people know him as. So it's just <laughs> like he, it's random and he'll figure it out. And like those characters think he just randomly figured it out, which is weird. I'm not defending the moment, but I, I think like that logically that's what they thought was happening. But the other guy doing it, I thought was very stupid. Like, we I, I, did not need a third party to help them in this this scenario. I did enjoy the back and forth of Goldblum and them, though, right? Where he's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10,000, just do something. And the yelling isn't help. Like, I just, I like that a little bit. Yeah. And again, that's, I think yeah, that may have been moment number one of four, where we got a, mo uh, a, a moment of him making us laugh, it, as opposed to, like, laughing at him. Because I thought a lot of his earlier appearances were just weak as fuck. I like he was useless as ever as every other character until the end when he became the Jeff Golden that we know and love from Thor Ragnarok and yeah. just kind of throwing shit <laughs> out there. Much. Great. Incredible. Uh, so they escape and they they make their way over uh, at some points. The other characters are in. a No, they get into a van, right? Uh, with all with all, and they start driving and they just happen to sort of drive in the same general direction. Big forest. But obviously just one road, apparently, because all roads lead to this mushroom tower that Bryce Dallas Howard has uh, held up at. And she gets attacked by a Dilophosaurus and it's like, <sighs> and then in a moment where I was like, fuck, yeah, Owen grabs this thing by its throat and just crushes it. <laughs> Right? What the it. fuck? He just oh, fuck you, and then to just to give Kayla something to do, she just goes like, <laughs> like shocks its head. I'm like, I think it's dead already, but fuck it, why not? And this is another one of those moments that, it, like, as the viewer, it, you are really transported back to watching your first slasher movie from the '70s, where it's like, just run away from the guy. That thing, like, just run to the fucking ladder. You're like, yeah, you yeah. see well, where it is. You're, the ladder to come down slowly. You're closer to the ladder or, than they are to it, yeah. and you could just make a break for it and you'll be fine. But I also hate that this is where we wasted the spit Raptor things. Like, mm. no, we bringing got them good, back. We got they got back. Bump with them with, with, to kill Campbell Scott, though. I thought that no, was but that's cool. what I'm saying. Like, in order to kill Campbell Scott, that's supposed to be the punchline to Wayne getting killed in part one. Well, especially since he has the Barbasol can. <laughs> It's the same. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's like it's all supposed to come full circle in that moment. That should have been the only time we saw the spitting dinosaur. It shouldn't have I been here. You. Yeah, like it just kind of felt stupid that I don't we, sh I don't we mind shouldn't it. have seen the spitting dinosaur until it killed uh, Dotson. I can see I see your perspective on that. I don't mind it so much because I, I we haven't seen those in since I think the first film. Right. So I think it was kind of nice to have a little setup for it. Where it's like, oh, they're out there. They're they're definitely still out there. But I definitely think the Campbell Scott death hit way harder than the scene did. Although when she looked over and I saw and the bush started moving, I was like, I bet it's one of the fucking <laughs> the well, I feel like yeah, it could have been any generic mm. dinosaur could have been slotted in for them. I don't yeah, feel but, like mm. it was a pretty We're just getting to the point now with all these dinosaurs where they keep throwing out these names and they're so complex and all the dinosaurs kind of look alike. There's like 
I just call it a T-Rex, man. If it, if it's <laughs> bigger than okay, let's. I think we should decide on this right now. I know we're getting long in this. If it's shorter than three feet, it's a compy. If it's between three and six feet, it's a Velociraptor. And anything above Velociraptor, if it has teeth, it's a fucking Brontosaurus. Rex, okay. <laughs> yeah. And if Greg it's a, if it's an herb eater, it's a Bronchiosaurus. <laughs> I cool watched bottle. this movie last night. I saw the Barbasol can. Yeah. And it queued up something in my brain that was ancient. And I was, I'm like, well, clearly that can't be it. But I've Googled it while talking to y'all. And is do you know how they got the Barbasol can? The Telltale can? Yeah. I have no idea. And do you we know that We talked about apparently... it on in review, the first one. You missed it, but uh, go for okay, it. Okay, okay. So that's canon. I didn't think that would be canon. They would actually carry over. Because I'm on a Screen Rant article from 2019. And it's talking about uh, one of the most enduring mysteries of Jurassic Park is the fate of Dennis Nedry's Barbasol can. Nedry was a computer program who accepted a bribe from rival company Biosyn to smuggle dinosaur embryos out of the park. He's given a can, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then it's, yeah, the, the story reveals that in the, in the video game Jurassic Park by Telltale uh, reveals that Nedry failed to reach the dock. Two Biosyn employees came to find him. They discover his corpse and the can, but then, then they're attacked by the dinosaur smugglers. It, like, holy shit, I... I never thought that the Telltale game would drop in something so important that would be here. I forgot. I forgot that, that we talked right. about that. In one. I did too. Our, See, our, I think I agree with you. They should have named the dinosaurs easier. And it's like when we have something called a T Rex, just go full Resident Evil if you're going to do it, and just have the V Rex, the X Rex, uh, the Z Rex. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck mm -hmm. not? Then that way we know that there's like well, more power. The hierarchy. Yeah, they did. They did it for yeah. the other movies, right? They, we have we have Dom. We have uh, the Dom. other. You know the other easier to put on toy boxes uh indochino yeah indochino Indo smoke. Indo smoke that's what it was you don't want this Indo smoke. Uh, you don't but anyway i digress everyone all roads apparently despite this being a very vast forest area uh lead to this mushroom thing all of our uh, uh protagonists from the first movie and and the newest movies meet and it's kind of an endearing moment and then uh we stumble along for the next 20 minutes as they get away from this T-Rex and there's way too many people to keep track of. Uh, so we'll so just, many. they go up into the, I don't, I'm not quite sure what their point was. They go up into this largely glass structure um, to get away from this massive eating machine that they've said five times is the biggest carnivore, carnivore. ever to walk the earth. And I Googled Apex it Predator. and I didn't find which one it was. So we'll just call it the Spinosaurus or the Giganosaurus. Gigantic. Um, I, think it's the, I think it's the Giga Allosaurus. Giga Allosaurus. We'll call him Giga. Gigabyte. Uh, I get it. Get it. <laughs> oh, bye oh, to you. God. That was good, dude. Damn, was, dude. It's good. Really, really good. good. <laughs> I'm right. So, it anyway, down. Gigabyte uh, bites them all. And then they just should. I think Owen, Owen takes turns slowly stabbing it in the eyeball while Kayla uh, goes and grabs a blow dart and hits it with a blow dart a couple times. And then somebody shocks it. And it's like, you know what? Fuck you guys. I just came here to hang out with you and you're stabbing me in the eyeball. It goes away. Meanwhile, by the way, they've tried to purge the locusts. And that did not work. The locusts burst out of the ceiling like bats from Batman. And now there's just locusts that are on fire dropping out of the sky left and right just at the right moment. So that, that happened as well. Uh, oh, it's the Gigantosaurus. Visually cool. Gigantosaurus. Sorry. Yeah. Visually cool, yes. Agreed. It's gigabyte. Yeah, I thought the, the fire locusts were visually cool, but like just silly overall. And I, I thought that the, the humans all kind of ganging up together to physically fight the, the gigabyte was like, it, it could have been cool. It had moments that were kind of cool just because we've never really seen that. It's usually everyone just running away. So like mm -hmm. them teaming up to actually fight them, I'm like, ah, at least this is something fresh for six movies in. Yeah, but we get the, and we get the Easter egg of Jeff Goldblum like doing the, waving the flare again, but this time it's a, it's a locust on fire. Burning stick, locust. Which is interesting. And it was um, cool, like asteroid. Yeah, you all mentioned it looked neat. I thought it was cool, yeah, that asteroid sort of parallel the asteroid showers kind of falling where dinosaurs live. I thought it looked pretty neat. Yeah. Um, so Flowers. at this point now, Campbell Scott knows that uh, his right hand guy, the person just is, isn't was like in on it. And instead of killing him, he's just like, wow, that's really disappointing. And he punches a chair. And then uh, black tie, black shirt guy is like, and the worst freak I can't out. help you. Yeah, right. So weird. Joey laughed really hard when he when he freaked out like that. Or well, it was just, really stupid. I don't, stupid. Like, it's hard so not to I don't <laughs> like this. I don't like this. And Joey just started laughing. And I turned to her. I was like, "Why didn't we get uh, more M and M's?" That's what. I oh, I ate a whole oh, bag. I, I had a whole box of dots. I felt like eating dots. Yeah. I love dots. Good for your jaw. It's good jaw. <laughs> they get stuck in your teeth, at least. Yeah, you but it's can... a nice activity. I needed something to do the whole movie. <laughs> 
Um, then the characters are like, we got to take the subway back to the thing because we can't take off while the Tyrannosaur, while the pterodactyls are still in the no-fly zone. And they get up, and Bryce Dallas Howard's like, I recognize this video game system. This is the same system we had back in Jurassic World. And uh, but now we have to split our characters up for some reason because we got to shut the power off in one area so we can turn the power on in the other area. And we get them, and then we find. And we got to go find Blue also, or Delta as well, because because and beta. I quote, Beta, right? I made a promise, <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum goes, uh, "You made a uh, uh, promise to a dinosaur." Fun line. And he goes, fun line. Yep. You got a problem with that? Not not as fun. Not as fun. <laughs> Guys, just cut after. What if we tried it both ways? Two screeners. We cut after the funny line, and we don't have Chris Pratt's line after that. We don't need it. Just ruin it. Anyway, they go down a fun scene with Bryce Dallas Howard and uh, Laura Dern where they have to fight off some of the locusts and, like, cut the power of the thing. I thought that was pretty cool. While yeah, Jeff honestly. Jeff Goldblum like- and the other guys, like, he's like, it's it th- how many times have we been in that situation where we're trying to prep? It's just it's like, it's four buttons down or three buttons up. She's like, just tell me the fucking button. Which button is it? And he's like, oh, yeah, geez, I, I, I enjoyed this. And even them being like, just run, just run through the thing. It's like, this, right there, there were moments here. <laughs> I was like, this is fun. If yeah. it was tightened up a little bit, I think this would have been a, a, a cool sequence. I think it worked. Of course, then we get the famous hand, which I'm sure now we're all going to start doing just anecdotally at Starbucks. <laughs> Right, just don't ah uh, ah uh, uh, slow up when you when you hold when you hand me that venti iced coffee. Uh, the trio. This is my biggest joke. laugh of the movie. So sure. this is she's so we like okay we got this dart that we've seen go into dinosaurs before but this dart for some reason can't break through his neck right here it's got to he's got beta's got to gotta be looking sideways right so we got to something about triangulation he somebody said something about triangulation so they split up into a triangle which I was I like, like what? yeah exactly what the fuck what? are you talking about triangulation what do you want me to do tell me where you want me to go that's, yeah, that's a great do. way to get your fucking ass bit by a fucking raptor yeah <laughs> triangulation <laughs> what, what, you like, what the hell are you talking about Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Tim's right there. <laughs> Sam Neil had just mentioned they always attack from the side. He had just he had just said that about mm-hmm. raptors. Like that's what they mm-hmm. like doing. Mm-hmm. So this is just like a little nod to what he had just mentioned earlier. But Whatever, still stupid. Still not good. Like I'm just because I'm telling you why doesn't mean it's good. So yeah. like <laughs> I'm not excusing it. <laughs> um, they shoot Delta. They shoot Beta, and then he slings it on the shoulder, and it's real cute. Uh, and then they come in. Dinosaur, dinosaur on the shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. What of what of it? <laughs> and it's like again just cut <laughs> right at the funny line after the yeah. funny line we can let the joke play it's fine uh then think they get Chris over Pratt the- has it in his uh like contract that he needs the last word for all jokes <laughs> because yeah, kind of seems like it it's like how the rock and vin diesel can't be like get beaten on screen mm-hmm. yeah and then when they had them square off it's like what it, the director's like head explodes he's like well, someone has to lose <laughs> the agents had to fight each other yeah they had to go fight each other you can see him in the background uh <laughs> for some reason the, the pilot goes over to the airfield and instead of everyone meeting her over there the rendezvous point is the middle of uh the new jurassic world area where all the dinosaurs electronically have been sent back because now the forest is on fire due to the locusts the ma- the massive prehistoric locusts that were set on fire but are still still managed to get miles and miles and miles of forest on fire um and so he's like oh don't don't land there but then she does and then we get the big fight between the, <laughs> between gigabit gigabyte and the rex and the rex goes down and i turned to joy i was like if that fucking rex's eyes don't blink right now i'm never watching another jurassic park movie wow. and sure shit greg the second i said that almost as if i fucking divined it the eye blinks i'll tell you what yeah, you get knocked yeah. out so hard your eyes are still open that's called death <laughs> uh, <laughs> just want you to know. but this thing comes back and knocks it into edward's scissor hands and it goes real easy and it's like jesus really who's who's the dominant here exactly uh, and it goes down and then again We've established the Tyrannosaurus Rex, just a down ass motherfucker, right? Yeah, He's yeah, silent yeah. as a ninja, gets the she. job done. She, excuse me, silent as a ninja, gets the job done. And instead of eating What's all of the other humans there, Rexy? Uh, Rexy or sexy? Greg's a part of the fucking Roxana, Discord group. Was What's it called? What's, what was it, Greg? Big Rex? I don't fucking remember. Big old remember. Rex. Anyway, instead of eating all the rest of the humans there, uh, Rex just goes, cool. See you guys. Hey, call me when you need me. I'll be there. And, did, and then peace is out. I did love how. Edward Scissorhands was just like there for the fight and just like, like yeah, swipe, like swiping at at the, woo, at the fucking gigabyte, woo. like and the T Rex is like, and fucking just like, and the the scissor hands guys is like kind of oh just God. like slashing the thigh. It was really like, funny no, looking. No, it's like when Stop. I cut, when it, like when I'm trying to put, like when I'm trying to touch Timmy. 
<laughs> so what was like the moral of this story? Like, cause I feel like the last couple movies, we get the team up the with Jurassic world with blue and with T-Rex. Is that what it is? It's just like, you know, we don't need to fight anymore. We can just coexist. You're cool for some reason. Like we ain't going to fuck with each other. Like why? I don't why know. is the Edward Scissorhands and, and Roberta? Okay. I, I, they're not, they shouldn't be. They're apex predators in, in the same arena. They should probably fight and kill. Well, one the other. scissors hands, I don't think was ever an apex predator, right? The apex no. was well, either gigabit. Cause it, yeah. Cause they established that it was a carnivore cause it ate a bush after it killed the deer. Right. So is he going to become like the T-Rex is like star scream, like his right hand man. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. I am. I, and, I then, like and, then, at... and then you think the day's over or you think like the day is lost or the, the journey missions lost. And then you hear cool, cool. <laughs> Cool, and you're like, oh, Blue is still alive. Over, dude. And Blue's Hell just yeah. riding Roxy like a <laughs> fucking parakeet. You know what I like to think about it as Tim and Greg. You'll you'll appreciate this. I there's will. A movie, there, you, there's a movie made a long time ago. It was a Sherlock Holmes film that I believe starred Michael Caine, and it was a it was a spin. Michael right? Caine. Sure, Sherlock Holmes, of course, Tim, famously uh, famous for, for being the one to divine all the information, the smart one, right? Watson just kind of there to, to explain to the audience what's really going on. This was a role reversal. When they, when they pulled the curtain back, oh. it was Watson that was really the smart one. Wow. And Michael Caine's oh. character was a bumbling idiot and was drunk the entire time. But be, for whatever reasons, unbeknownst to me, they were like, he's the superstar because he's the one that the namesake. That's how I feel it is in this one. T-Rex, bumbling idiot, Edward Scissorhands. The real brains behind the opera. Really? Because you just gave T Rex a lot of credit a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Anywhere you need me, I'll be there. Right? T Rex is T Rex is the Jack Reacher of, of of Jurassic Park. It just shows up on a bus, and it's like I feel I'm needed here for some reason. I thought you were uh, saying, yeah, T Rex, like you know, has all the strength and they're sneaky, sneaky like a fox. Yeah, know, super smart, stuff. super and smart. Then then also, or Edward Scissorhands just stands there. Apex Predator. The Listen, does it, he's, the, he's doing that because he's not a threat. Does it surprise you guys at all that uh, those both both those theories fit in the world of this movie? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, then they get into the plane and they fly away. Um, I think right. That's how seems like a lot of people for this little helicopter. It's a very whatever. small helicopter thingy, but it's a cool, cool helicopter looking helicopter. Turbo jet Pretty things. Cool. Yeah, they have definitely. something very similar in Microsoft Flight Simulator because oh, hold on, like hold on, hold on, around Tokyo in it. Real quick, and this this is this is for uh, Barrett because Barrett was not there at the movie. Uh, hold on, that's uh, that's still the big dinosaur. Uh, for audio listeners, here's what I'm drawing. Oh, hold on, let me. Jesus God Christ! It, please, Andy. I hate Keep that going, it's separated. I'm gonna, draw, going. I'm gonna draw it like above the dinosaur. Okay, so uh, in, so audio listeners, there's a fountain, this uh, the shape of a circle, oh, and yeah. it's like drop in water, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like out mm -hmm. in this courtyard, this really beautiful courtyard. Mm -hmm. And as the T Rex is walking Badass. by it, the T Rex is walking by it. It, it imagine here's arrows like pointing to it. The T Rex ends up right here, just like the fucking logo. Badass. And he's like, Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking awesome. And it, and then Greg Greg tapped me on the shoulder. It was like, it's like the logo is so cool. Oh wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, hey, do you guys want to know what um uh you, you guys talked about dinosaur perverts earlier? Do you want to know the yes, first? Yes, please, image? please bring it up. The Barrett. first image yeah. that's shown if you look up dinosaur perverts on Google, it's sure. this fucking monstrosity. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the dinosaur <laughs> pervert of ever saw one. I love him. Man. Really? Because I, I, I'd know. say the only dinosaur pervert is uh, Nick Scarpino for sending me this image saying dual boners, but spelling dual <laughs> D-U-E-L. <laughs> dual Double dual of the boners. Greg. Double entendre. Yeah, I understand. Dual of the boners. That. Dual of the boners. There it is. So we're right there. We're right at the end. And I got to say, Nick, I am proud of you for not having Wikipedia. You kind of nailed this fucking movie with all yeah, of its man. bullshit. It's easy to do when 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 the, when the this is how they wrote the movie. They just dictated it and then they just went into production. <laughs> uh, we we missed, we did miss the part with the recap where the where uh, Blue gets – Beta gets delivered back to Blue. Blue's like, thanks, dog. And then runs off. Uh, and then I think we get one more beat with the, hey, dinosaurs are here and everyone's cool with it. And we get a, another montage that's just happy this time of like, yeah. they're all coexisting. And, and then now the final this. shot, yeah. like a Lion <laughs> Which King Which I also off. tackle that. The, for some just, reason, the dinosaurs running with the lions or the horses just really got me. Yeah, there was the, uh, the, the whales and the giant whale killing fucking dinosaur that would have just killed those whales. It's like, what? No. Yeah. <laughs> it was Triceratops and elephants as well in the Serengeti. Looking yeah. really cool. That was cool, man. Weird. Anyway, Good movie. Yeah. The end. <laughs> Good movie. There we go. Now it is time to do what I like to call 
haiku in review. You're sure you are right about that. Uh huh. <laughs> Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If it's not poetic, no need to fret. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form, just like Ignacio Rojas did, who says, I say, screw them, Greg. Better than Planet of Apes. This movie is fun. Fuck that. You're a lying bastard. You didn't even see it, didn't see it Ignacio. Ignacio. You're just going to get on the show. You did. Congratulations. You cheated yourself and the worldies. All worldies the worldies out or there. Worldies. 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 Okay. <sighs> Raggy Baggy, that, please. Oh, that was the only haiku in review yet. Nobody seen the goddamn no, movie. Nobody should. Raggy. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys here for Jurassic World in review. I'll be honest with you. I thought I had a couple more seconds to pull this up. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, we number got one. Nedry, number one, two. Tim, cool your jets. <laughs> <laughs> go when you see that when you I see Maverick for later you. i'm your you wingman okay later, i'm your fucking network it. you're my fucking rio i'll be your rio bag nedry number one two vincent d'onofrio and Dom. <laughs> number two <laughs> number three ludlow and roland from lost world number four mills and indo smoke number five spinosaurus and the velociraptors billy paula and amanda where do we want to put tim, tim cook. cook and now pretty much just tim cook right we'll this needs to go at number seven gigabyte a gigabyte. This needs to go at number seven. This one's terrible. I, I think it's absolutely atrocious. Like, I think the locust things are like, it could have been cool. And uh, the gigabyte sucked. Hated gigabyte. Nothing interesting about that at all. Edward Scissorhands, kind of cool. But I don't think it was like the main baddie. And nah. at the end, kind of was a good guy. So, yeah, I, I think this is last. Put it last. Uh, you're right. Put dead last. last. There it is. Okay, so what are we, what are we putting here? Dead last? Uh, we're going we to put a, wanna... we're going to put a dead last. <laughs> It's n- number six. Joey wants to put it number seven, but we don't have a play. We, we do. don't, we're hoping if you put it number seven, Joey, that's dooming us to another Jurassic Park movie one day. So I, I'm that's on Tim you. Cook and Gigabyte. There you go. Tim Cook and Gigabyte. Number six. Yeah. And it's done. Um, last week, I asked two questions. Will the dinosaurs talk? And will Chris Pratt ride a raptor? Neither of those happened. Unfortunately. Uh, really upset about that. It's going to be a better movie tomorrow. It's time for dinosaurs. Which death is the Beth? I can get my guitar number one. back in time. Which <laughs> death is the Beth? That death is better than all the rest. <laughs> Take it off, Greg. Take it off. Greg just ripped that off of like a Mentos commercial. <laughs> number one, we have the assistant jump the shark by the TDs from Great. Jurassic World. Yep, TDs. Uh, we have so the bad. Nedry death. Coming in at number two, we have the dual T Rex takedown of the fate, <laughs> tied with the Udensky bait death from three, and then last we have Jurassic World double spike blue domination. That was last place. Uh-huh. What, uh huh. So I what feel are we like this one? I'm debating. I think it's the the Edward Scissorhands yeah. Dead Rex yeah, combo yeah, kill. I'd put that in there. Dead last, but like yeah, the Campbell Scott yeah. death was, was interesting though. That was interesting. Was remember it? the last, yeah, because the thing like looks over him and it's kind of comical. It's like, ah. <laughs> at the end, it's like, oh no. I still think the guy in the bird scooter is a more interesting death than either of these, but whatever. He goes like, ciao, molto belle. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Dead last, whatever. <laughs> All right, so I like, I like last, the Edward Jones death. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not passionate Edward. about any of the deaths in this movie. Yeah, which is so sad. Like, come on, guys. That is like, if you're going to do one thing, have some Beth deaths. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, all right. Now it's time to rank the Jurassic universe, uh, which might be the subtitle of the next trilogy. Uh, can you imagine if Jurassic Galaxy was yeah. next? It's oh, 2,000 wait, you know years into the future. I, I do have a death, Beth, a Beth death. Um, oh but it's God, like one that Andy, happened it super home. And it happened super fast. And it was like, there was a dude inside of that little underground drug station where uh, oh, all the mm-hmm. drugs and were they doing drugs i don't know but it was like yeah, in the underground crime pain, section sure. black market dino yes yeah. and there was like Assault. a dude who had been hurt by a dino and he was on the ground his friend goes to go help him 
and then the guy who was helping him oh, just gets fucking gets eaten chomped. by one of those uh allosaurs the the guy with the red horn uh that was kind of like a beth death for me honorable mention that's an andy mm-hmm. death there you go mm-hmm. now it's time to rank the jurassic universe number one jurassic park number two Jurassic World, number three, Jurassic Park three, number four, The Lost World, Jurassic Park, number five, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I, I'm going to start the bidding. This might sound crazy. <laughs> this oh, might my sound God. oh my God, crazy. Nick, let's get spicy, baby. But I want to fucking get a little, uh, a little spicy tomato into this pizza sauce here. I want to put this above Fallen Kingdom. I think this movie was actually Whoa. kind of more I fun do than too. that. I and it's 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 a worse movie by far because it makes zero sense at times. But it's bonk. It's gone full bonkers. This one was they took they took the leash off. And I think that I don't know. I think like which one would I rather go see right now? No, I would rather see this one again than watching Fallen Kingdom because that just felt like such a slog when they got to the mansion. It was just so fucking like it just dragged so badly. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna put this at number five. That's where I'm gonna start. I'd put this dead last. I'd put this dead last. This is th- this when this we eventually in about two years do the worst Rewatch. movie of all time on in review and we gather like the last two movies of every series and Oof. like rank them against each other. This will be real high up there for me of just like complete useless waste of time. That, honestly, I... I'm right there with you and we've talked about worst movies before just kind of gut what we think and my current one is Transformers The Last Night. That's a tough and this one. gets Maybe. close. This gets close <laughs> to that. I put this dead last easily, and I did not like Fallen Kingdom. Okay. Joey Noel. I'm with Nick. I put this at number five. I think that the fact that nothing in this movie makes sense <laughs> makes it a more fun watch. Everything makes sense, Joey. Exactly. Uh, makes it more fun than Fallen Kingdom. Um yeah, it's just so off the rails that I think it's more enjoyable to watch. Plus, you get the old cast Jake back. Miller. Dead last. Take the it's a terrible movie. Fallen Kingdom was more enjoyable than this. There you go. Jurassic World's Dominion. Dead last. And thus, we are done with the Jurassic rewatch, which is crazy. Really crazy to think about. Next week, we're returning. The lowest batting average, by the way, Tim? Like the lowest kind of like winning percentage batting average for any of these series when we're talking about like one of six is a good movie mm-hmm. yeah like probably yeah. right Transformers isn't far behind Transformers, Transformers but that's no, different there are though. no good movies in Transformers yeah <laughs> I liked Bumblebee Bumblebee right? yeah, Bumblebee's yeah okay. but it's not on the Jurassic Park's that. level though oh, no. Bumblebee yeah. uh, but next week for in review we are returning with not one but two in reviews we are yes. going to do Buzz Lightyear Yes, Sorry, Lightyear excited. in review in our Pixar in review on Friday. But before that, we are going to start our Thor rewatch leading into mm. Thor Love and Thunder uh, with Thor 1, a movie we have not watched since our original in MCU in review leading into uh, Infinity War back in 2017. So that's this is going to be kind of crazy. And yeah, I'm trying to see what's up with little uh, Natalie Portman, you know? What's up with little Natalie small. Portman? What is she doing? So little. Natty Pat. Now, let me ask Pat. you this question: Is is Natalie Portman smaller than Watto or bigger than Watto? If you had to, oh, he, she's bigger than Watto. Okay. I mean, we know they've been on screen together. Yeah, oh, but Natty Portman. Oh, photography. Shit. Photography. They have been on screen together. <laughs> that screen. is crazy. <laughs> Which one's crap. bigger than a pumpkin? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>